Good Friday morning. Coming up here on GMA, Donald Trump pleading not guilty to criminal charges related to trying to overturn the 2020 election. What happens next in the trial and what it means for his 2024 campaign? We're going to cover all those angles. Plus, it's all about the heat again. We've got that dome that hasn't budged much from Texas, but the Gulf Coast has been baking this week. Uh, lots of record highs from Baton Rouge to New Orleans after the hottest July on record for so many people. We'll talk about that and it getting all the way through Southern California to the coast. We'll have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Nineteen ninety five saw the release of the vehicular combat game Twisted Metal race onto Sony's brand new PlayStation game console. Light em up, boys. <laughs> the fast paced franchise spawned ten games. The most recent Twisted Metal blasted its way onto the PlayStation three in twenty twelve. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engine. Anthony Mackie stars in the post-apocalyptic Peacock series based on the game franchise as a courier making deliveries between walled-off cities. I played the game a lot when I was a kid. The, the show, you know, it harkens back to the, the themes and the ideas of the game, but it gives you backstory and context. This is gonna be fun! Mackie is also an executive producer on the series, which led to an interesting decision when filming this scene with professional wrestler Samoa Joe as the killer clown Sweet Tooth. The funny thing is, the first time we did it, he banged my head into the slot machine. And when I was like, dude, this dude is going to kill me, right? So I looked at it on the on the monitor and I was like, man, that looks really good. So now as a producer, I have to decide, do I get him to lighten up because it hurt or do I get him to do it harder because it looks so good? Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Don't forget to get your tickets for this year's KSAP Pigskin Classic to scan this code to see all of our ticket options. They're on sale now. You can find that information on ksat.com. It kicks off on August 25th, followed by our triple header the next day on the 26th. Still ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. San Antonio police are investigating a deadly crash on the city's west side, what the driver is being accused of doing before the crash. Plus, a local church is hoping to provide school supplies for kids in need, but they're worried they won't have enough in a few weeks. How you can help coming up. And up next, we're gathering new information on our water main break near University Hospital. What we've been able to learn from the scene and checking Transguide right now. Things look pretty good at 1604 and FM 78. There's further down, actually different part of town at Petranco and jump over to I-10 at the Y. We'll be back. The most kind hearted, most sweetest, most loving kid you can imagine. This morning on GMSA, a New Braunfels man has been identified as the second victim of a deadly Wisconsin plane crash. How his family is honoring the 20-year-old this morning. Outside with live cam, if you're doing anything, anything outdoors this weekend, you will want to hydrate well in advance, like starting today. Extreme temperatures are locked in over South Central Texas. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Rise and shine. It's 6 o'clock on your Friday the 4th. Happy Friday. Thank you for starting your morning with us. Yay, we made it to the weekend. Let's go ahead and check the roads out there with Transky. Looking over at I-10 and Callahan West. And things are looking good. And now 35 at Flores. They look pretty good. Friday morning so far. Uh, commuters will see more changes out on Loop 1604 this weekend and to change things up. We've sent Stephen Cavazos out into the field this morning where he's doing a fantastic job previewing some of those closures. Good morning, Stephen. Well, I do miss hanging out with you guys in the studio, but it's great to get out to let our viewers know what they can expect for these big projects. Weekend closures are on the way, guys, and it's right here along Loop 1604. We're talking about the North Expansion Project. It has been a big project that's been underway for several years, and we can expect to see more of those closures ramp up. But right behind me, we're seeing traffic pick up a little bit. We always talk about how 6 a.m. things tend to change around this hour, and it's no joke. We're really seeing a lot more people out here along the main lanes as well as the frontage road of 
of Loop 16 of War, at least within the last few minutes. Also, some crews out here doing some repairs to some of the roads that are under construction right now. More on that a little bit later on. But while we're keeping an eye here along Loop 1604, we're also keeping a watchful eye on any of the incidents that may pop up that could still impact your commute. Let's go ahead and pull up that traffic page here for you and let you know what you can expect. So according to TxDOT, we still have a pretty serious crash along Loop 410 northbound, not too far from Ben's Engelman Road. At last check, there were at least two lanes blocked, and I believe Sarah Costa has been reporting about a fatal situation out there. We'll hear from her a little bit later on in the newscast, but we are watching that very closely. Other areas that we are keeping a close eye on are some stalled vehicles that popped, popped up, that is, along 281 uh, northbound lanes, not too far from Bassey Road. We at least had a shoulder lane that was blocked at this time. And another stalled vehicle was added along I-35 northbound at New Braunfels. And I have to give a big shout out to our producer Haley, who's updating these incidents for us on our traffic page to let you guys know what you can expect before you have to hit the roads. But let's get a live look back out here along Loop 1604. You can see that we do have some crews out here behind me, but more of that work is expected to shut down the main lanes of Loop 1604. I know it's a headache, guys, but we're going to get you through it. More on what you can expect coming up a little bit later on. But Mike, the good news is these drivers or these crews out here, I should say, are not having to battle the heat overnight, but it's still a little warm. Yeah, it, it's pretty warm and humid starting off around here uh, this morning, and we do have a lot of clear skies. Then things are really going to, uh, the heater's going to get turned up later on today. So we're at 80 right now, still four degrees above normal, 73 up there at Bernie Stage, 81 at Canyon Lake, and we do have some of our morning humidity hanging around here. So if you are getting an early jump on things, yeah, you're going to be dealing with some of this humidity, especially Canyon Lake uh, over toward Randolph, New Braunfels. When you get these dew points, 74, 75 and above that, that's really humid. humid. So it uh, feels like 87 at Canyon Lake and 83 down the road at Port SA. Heat advisories later on today because even though the humidity it keeps saying drops down in the afternoon, it's just the plain old temperatures that are so, so hot. And of course, with that drier air, lower humidity, that and combined with some other factors does increase the fire increased fire danger all around the area, but specifically the red flag warning from San Antonio up to the north and throughout the rest of today, 94 at noon and then 104. We had a, I guess we call it a little bit of a break yesterday of 101, but it's back up to 104. That's going to be that's the situation the next couple of days and then even hotter going into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. To some late breaking news, a man is dead after he was hit by a car on the frontage road of Blue Port 10, not far from the Riddiman Road exit on the city's northeast side. All right, Sarah Costa is live near the scene. And Sarah, we see Textile has now closed down two lanes of that frontage road for traffic investigators. That's right. Good morning, Mark and Steph. So Textile, we're in the parking lot of a business right next to this frontage road and text dot is right next to us. They've closed down one lane, but further down where that man was struck, both lanes are closed down. We do have an update that person uh, that was struck and killed on impact. The medical examiner did just arrive and they did take that body away. So that part of the scene is still getting it cleared up. I just saw San Antonio Fire Department just arrived and usually when they come to scenes like this after someone's been struck and killed in the middle of the street and what they're going to do now is clean up that area before they reopen both of these lanes of the Loop 410 frontage road heading northbound. What we know right now is police say just after four this morning, a witness called 911 saying there was a body in the road. Shortly after that, police say the driver who hit the person also called 911 saying he said someone was walking in the middle of this access road and that's when they hit them. The sergeant says that the driver initially didn't stop to render aid and pulled over a little ways down, then called 911. So police say the driver is cooperating with the police. And at this time, they are trying to determine if how that driver responded to hitting that man will be considered rent stopping and rendering aid. As for the person who died, police say it's a man in his late 20s, early 30s. Um, he was killed on impact. It looks like this scene is going to be clearing in the next five minutes or so. Uh, so hopefully this won't be impacting anyone else's drive. We know uh, HEB uh, manufacturing plant is down the road has impacted a lot of people heading to work this morning, but hopefully the situation will clear in the next five minutes. Live from the Northeast side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you, Mark Steph. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, SAUCE crew is working to repair a water main break near University Hospital. It's been going on since last night. 
And this is new video into the KSAT newsroom. Here you can see water going down part of Medical Drive between Floyd Curl and Wurzbach. We will continue to follow this still developing situation. KSAT has learned the second victim in a deadly Wisconsin plane crash last weekend was also from New Braunfels. He is 20-year-old Zachary Kali Moreno. That's right. He was a passenger on board with fellow New Braunfels native and pilot Devin Riley. Our Avery Everett spoke to Zach's family, who says his dream was to fly. He knew um, everything about every aircraft. In just 20 years of life, the family of Zachary Colley Moreno says he accomplished a lot. Anything that he was interested in, he learned everything about it. His family remembering his big smile and even bigger ambitions. The most kind-hearted, most sweetest, most loving kid you can imagine. Colin Moreno died in a plane crash Saturday morning in Wisconsin, just one of two people on board. He was visiting for an air show, something for which his stepdad, Brandon Greenberg, says he saved money to go. Oshkosh really was a big deal. You know, he talked about it for the last few years. It was his first time in Oshkosh. Greenberg says his stepson did not yet have a pilot's license, but he was already working as an aircraft mechanic. These pilots, um, um, and the commemorative air force, these really were Zachary's heroes. As a man of many passions, family says Zach was one of a kind. He was the kind of kid that was infectious. Um, anybody who was around him, um, they wanted to hear his stories. You know, he loved everybody he met. The National Transportation Safety Board and the Federal Aviation Administration are currently investigating this crash, but they say that investigation could take anywhere from a year to two years. In the meantime, Zach's family is setting up a memorial for him next week, but they say it's only open right now to family and friends. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Texas A&M will pay $1 million to journalism professor Kathleen McElroy in a settlement after pushback to her hiring led the school to water down its offer. Dr. McElroy was going to be the new director of the journalism school unit until complaints surfaced about her previous writings on race issues. According to A&M's internal review, the university then changed the job offer from a three-year deal to a one-year deal that also did not include tenure anymore. Any morning headlines, immigration attorneys tell ABC News the Texas DPS arrested several fathers seeking asylum last month. 26 fathers have been arrested, or rather separated from their families, with many of them being arrested on trespassing charges. ABC News reports when asylum seekers reach the river, Texas DPS troopers, instead of immigration officers, were separating family members and then taking them into state prison. Immigration attorneys also say it's unknown when the families will be reunited due to the separated members having to go through different proceedings. LGBTQ plus Texans have filed a federal lawsuit to block a new state law that criminalizes drag shows if they occur in front of children. The plaintiffs represented by the American Civil Liberties Union of Texas argue that Senate Bill 12 violates the First and 14th Amendments because the law, quote, discriminates against the content and viewpoints of performances and imposes prior restraint on free expression, end quote. In addition to the acting attorney general, LGBTQ plus groups are suing the district attorneys of Bear County. Meanwhile, new tensions this morning between the U.S. and China. Months after a Chinese spy balloon was shot down off the East Coast, two U.S. So sailors on the West Coast have been arrested, accused of spying for Beijing. As ABC's Lionel Moise reports, officials warn these arrests could be just the tip of the iceberg. This morning, federal investigators are charging two U.S. Navy sailors with stealing defense secrets and selling them to China. When a soldier or sailor chooses cash over country and hands over national defense information in an ultimate act of betrayal, we have to be ready to act. In both cases, the sailors were allegedly approached by Chinese spies and offered thousands of dollars in exchange for delivering classified details about naval operations. It's unclear if the two cases are connected. 22-year-old Jin Chao Wei, also known as Patrick Wei, faces the most serious charge of espionage. Prosecutors say Wei, a sailor on the USS Essex, sent a Chinese spy details about the defense and weapons capabilities of Navy ships 
and information on ship movement. Authorities say Wei was paid at least $5,000 for selling technical manuals, blueprints, photos, and videos of the Essex. This is part of a brazen campaign by the People's Republic of China to target U.S. military officials. And 26-year-old sailor Wen Hang Zhao, stationed at a naval base in Ventura County, is charged with conspiracy and taking bribes. Authorities say over the course of nearly two years, he sold photographs of diagrams of a U.S. military radar system in Japan, as well as precise operational details about an upcoming naval exercise. Zhao allegedly got paid nearly $15,000. Officials warn these two cases could just be the tip of the iceberg as China expands its efforts to infiltrate the U.S. military. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 612, 79 degrees. At the break, important news if you're trying to get pregnant, why the foods you eat could be having a big impact. Outside with live cam on your Friday morning, down to about 79 degrees. Another very, very hot weekend on store for South Central Texas. We'll talk to Mike coming up a little later on in the newscast. Welcome back. Just about 616. This is very interesting. Researchers in Australia have found why some people get cancer and others don't. And it has to do with the cells inside our bodies. They discovered a connection between the functions of circular RNAs within our cells, revealing that specific RNAs linked with our DNA lead to mutations that cause cancer. They found this connection by testing blood on infants who had blood disorders and those who did not. Those with blood disorders and a higher count of circular RNAs developed leukemia. You might want to start eating more strawberries after you hear this. A new study says a daily helping of strawberries can keep cognitive decline and heart disease at bay. The antioxidants found in the fruit make this possible. Research also shows that eating strawberries can also improve gut health and relieve inflammation. A group participating in the study who ate strawberries daily experienced a drop in blood pressure and improvement in the body's ability to fight harmful ox oxidants. Go outside with TransGuide once again, taking a look at uh, I-35 at New Braunfels Avenue, and the sun is just about starting to come up. That's right, and before you drive off into the weekend, plan ahead. Let's get some help. Stephen Cavazos is reporting live this morning on GMSA from 1604 between Blanco and Bitters, where another full closure is set to take place. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, guys. Well, we're trying something different out here this morning. We want to bring our viewers the updates on the big closures that are happening in and around our area. And if you've driven through Loop 1604, you've seen those barricades go up and the main lane shut down. But remember, it's part of the 1604 North Expansion Project. Take a look behind me. It's a very busy corridor, and TxDOT in, uh, estimates about 150 thousand drivers make this commute each and every day and again I know it's a pain to navigate but we're going to see those closures go back up to improve the mobility around here. Take a look at the video from last week as crews are placing those barricades and shutting down the main lanes. So again that's going to happen again but remember this is just one of five segments part of the project that begins over on the far northwest side segment one that is at Bandera Road and it stretches all the way to I-35 on the city's northeast side and that's about 23 miles of roadway there. This is a billion dollar project, and as I mentioned earlier, it aims to increase mobility and reduce travel times for commuters by 50%, according to TxDOT. Now, again, where we're standing is in segment three, which stretches from I-10 to US 281, and according to TxDOT officials, they are just about halfway complete. And I know it's a pain to navigate, but TxDOT wants to remind these drivers that good things come to those who wait. Take a listen. Just remember that um, it'll all be worth it in the end. Like you said, it's a billion dollar investment um, to reduce congestion. And when it's all done, uh, we'll see uh, your commute times um, be reduced by more than 50%. Sounds good to me. Well, all right. Well, just remember this weekend we will see the westbound main lane full closure from Blanco Road to Bitters Road. That work begins at 9 this evening and should wrap on Monday morning at 5. Quick detour for traffic. Just head westbound and exit the frontage road by taking the Blanco Road exit ramp. You can stay on the frontage road and get back on the main lanes through the Bitters Road entrance ramp. I know it's a lot of information to take in, but if you scan this QR code that is now on your screen, that takes you to our traffic page. And as I mentioned in our earlier traffic hits, we have a new 
article on our page that breaks down the Loop 1604 project, what you can expect this weekend and what lies ahead. But remember, this is a pretty big project. And right now we have three of those segments that are under construction and they anticipate that those segments should be completed by 2027. And I know that's a long ways out, but as you heard earlier from TechStat, good things do come to those who wait. We're going to be out here live letting you know what you can expect, as well as bringing you any traffic incidents that pop up on the roadway. It's been a pretty busy Friday morning, but we wouldn't be able to get it through without our producer Haley Powers and everyone back in the station. So thank you for making these uh, live shots happen. We're going to have more for you guys coming up a little bit later on. Definitely. Thank you to Haley Powers. Yeah, we look forward to it. Thank you, Stephen. All right, this is an interesting picture, and I assume they're living up to that, but hey, five minutes <laughs> in the cooler with every purchase at that flower <laughs> store. Do they promise? That's not, I bet they would, a lot of people would volunteer to help out there right? in the cooler. Right. So can you imagine having a job at the uh, ice plant? That's, that's the enviable job this time of year, so. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Yeah, anyway, you can, uh, anything you can do to stay cool this time of year because, yeah, it is definitely going to be on the hot side. At least we do have, of course, the lower humidity in the afternoon. Sun doesn't officially peak over the horizon for about another 45 minutes, but wow. That's a pretty looking picture. A couple of high wispy clouds hanging around here right now. We are going to be warming up through the 80s very quickly this morning, already getting up to 94 degrees today at noon. And then, of course, we're going to top off at 104. We had a little bit of a, a break, I guess you can call it. Forecast was for 103. We stayed at 101 yesterday. I don't know if you call that a cool down, but it just wasn't as intense. But every degree, you know, once you get above 100, it seems like every degree you add to it, it just is, uh, you, you know, makes you grit your teeth a lot harder. 80 or 85, I wish, 105 for a uh, heat index later on today. So uh, the forecast temperature is 104, so it's not going to be that much above the actual air temperature, which is good. That's the indication of the drier air that's going to be in place later on today. The, the humidity mixes out in the afternoon, as we call it, and then, of course, comes back in in the morning. Satellite, nothing is showing up right now. And around the country, big thing to take away from this is you can sort of make out the clockwise rotation centered right on top of us. That's the high, which is centered right on top of us. And all of the activity, which is in the main flow going across the northern tier of the United States, that is staying well up there, moving just about straight west to east. So a lot of big thunderstorms in and around the mid-south, straight up to the north of us. And despite that, they're still up in the low 80s, still the same temperature that pretty much we have around here, except they are actually getting some rain as of right now. Look at that up at Cutbank, 57 degrees, 54 at International Falls right now. I feel kind of bad. I apologize for mentioning those temperatures. So up there around 54. Can you imagine that? Yeah, we can imagine that. Right now we'll just pretend. I know. So again, sorry for pointing that out. <laughs> anyway, 104. We're going to be 50 degrees warmer than that later on today. Yeah, let's not do the math. 105 by Sunday all the way through next week. Um, not to make light of this at all, it is going to be just brutally hot all week long. Individual daily records are going to be tied, broken, and the only really relief, if at all, I see is probably coming by the middle of then the following week in toward the say 15th, 16th. There are some indications we could get. So basically two Hopefully. weeks from Oh, yeah. From now. Yeah. So. Yep, that is a couple weeks away. Yeah. It's a tough start of school for the kiddos next week, for those mm. who start next week. Yeah, and, and again, now, you know, a lot of the bands are starting to yeah. do all the practices and everything. Football's going to be hitting field soon, too. So, oh, bless your heart. Hydrate, hydrate. Yeah, careful. 623, 79 degrees. And just ahead, singer Lizzo is fighting back, saying a lawsuit claiming that she body shamed her dancers is outrageous. The latest on this week's scandal and your GMA first look. Trilogy for COPD. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. You don't have to take COPD <laughs> sitting down. It's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. And I'm feeling good. Start a new day with Trilogy.
No once daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trelogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trelogy makes breathing easier for a full 24 hours, improves lung function, and helps prevent future flare ups. Trelogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trelogy more than prescribed. Trelogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. This morning's GMA First Look, Lizzo's accusers sound off. You can see a public figure um, and all you know about them is what they present to you when the cameras are on and the cameras are rolling. ABC's Kelly Carter sat down with three women behind the lawsuit for their reaction. Lizzo responded to the allegations. She responded to the lawsuit in part. She said these sensationalized stories are coming from former employees who have already publicly admitted that they were told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. How do you guys respond to that? It completely kind of invalidates all of our experience and our trauma and our pain. And coming up on Good Morning America and GMA3, we'll have much more of the interview and the latest on how Lizzo's team is responding to these allegations. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Right now in GMSA, San Antonio police are investigating this deadly crash on the west side, what the driver is being accused of doing before it happened. Plus, we're like 600 backpacks short still. And so if anybody wants to be a blessing, man. Local church hoping to provide school supplies for kids in need, but they're worried they're not going to have enough in a few weeks. How you can help, that's coming up. And outside with Live Camp, beautiful sunrise yet again over South Texas as we kick off your Friday morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. It is 630 Friday, August 4th. Thanks so much for starting your morning with us. That's right. Let's take a look at the roads with Transguide to see how your commute looks on this Friday morning. Let's look over at I-35 at New Braunfels where things are moving in this shot and also at I-35 at Loop 410. We're expecting more slowdowns this weekend as the 1604 expansion project continues and our Stephen Cavazos is out live on the far north side continuing our previews of those closures. Morning. Happy Friday, guys. Plan your commute ahead of time. We have been talking about the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. It's expected to ramp back up again this weekend. We have full closures on the way and different parts along Loop 1604. I've been talking about it all morning long, but as you can see behind me, the commute is shaping up uh, pretty quietly here. Just a little busy as we get closer to morning rush. We have been keeping a close eye here along the corridor, but also other spots that could potentially be a problem for you. Let's take a look at that graphic page that has been updated by our producer Haley powers. I've not seen anything major being reported at this hour. We do have at least one stall vehicle that's still been there along 281 southbound or pardon me northbound at Bassey Road where we have a shoulder lane blocked, but doesn't really seem to be causing so much of an impact with the commute, but it is a busier time. More folks are waking up here at 630 and getting their morning rolling. But as we take it back out here alive along Loop 1604, we're between Bitters Road and Blanco Road, which is going to see some closures. As I mentioned earlier, the westbound lanes will see a full closure closure throughout the weekend that's expected to wrap Monday morning. We are breaking it all down for you and what you can expect for your weekend commute. I'll have that update coming up in the next few minutes, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Hope you're staying uh, cool out there with that humidity. What a spectacular sunrise. Sun's going to be peeking over the horizon in just about 20 minutes. And as you can see, maybe a couple of clouds will be forming up 80 degrees right now. We are four above normal dew point stands at 73, which means, yep, there's some humidity out there with that wind out of the south at eight miles per hour. Heat index 84 at the airport, 85 Canyon Lake, 83 is what it feels like right now at uh, Castroville. Mold is on the low side. The update account is going to come out in about an hour or so have the heat advisories for later on today, just like the past couple of days. And this is all just because temperatures are so high. We're not going to have those exorbitant heat ad, uh, index readings. Remember a couple of months ago when we had temperatures that were up around 104, 105, but the humidity kept sticking around in the afternoon, and that's why it felt like it was 115. You're not going to be dealing with that, but it is going to be very, very hot for the foreseeable future. Also, red flag warnings are in effect up 
until 9 o'clock this evening for portions of the Hill Country and Bear Counties. Warm and humid this morning and then 104 today. Yeah, it's going to be hot. That's still a good seven degrees above normal and the weekend. It is going to be heating up a bit. 104 tomorrow, 105 Sunday in through pretty much all of next week. So as far as our seven day forecast, even going on about 10 days, there is no relief in sight. Maybe something way down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man riding his bicycle was killed when he was hit by two vehicles on the city's west side. It happened around 930 last night at General McMullen and Castroville Road. Police say the man in his 70s was on his bike when he was hit by someone driving a black pickup. He was then dragged into a Valero parking lot by someone driving a white SUV that was behind the pickup. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. The police say the driver of the SUV was detained for DWI. New details this morning in a story we've been following. A couple weeks ago, we told you about Last Chance Ministries back to school bash. Well, the demand is still coming in and they need your help. A record setting number of families have registered. They're anticipating 3,500 students and registration doesn't close until Monday. Kids will receive school supplies, some new clothes, and about 30 barbers and hairdressers will also provide their services. The pastor says the church is relying on its faith and donations to help students in our area. We're like 600 backpacks short still, and so if anybody wants to be a blessing, man, I've been saying we're going to close it since last week, but we keep it going. We're just trusting God that the community and the city will come together and continue to pour into, you know, continue to bring backpacks and stuff, and we don't want to leave any kid out. So the Back to School Bash is a week from tomorrow. That's Saturday, August 12th at Rosedale Park. Registration is open to students from kindergarten all the way through college. If you'd like to help, Last Chance Ministries is accepting those donations. You can see some of the items they need on your screen right now. We have all the information about how to donate and how to register on ksat.com. Just look for this story on our homepage. And it's almost the start of the school year, and there are some things you can do right now to help prepare your family for the back-to-school routine. Experts with Teach for America San Antonio recommends that you start reestablishing your school routine the week before school starts. And this includes getting your kiddos to the back-to-the-bedtime schedule, back to normal, waking them up at the time they would for school, and having a fixed meal time. It will also help acclimate the students into the routine that they need to be um, successful coming into the first day of school. Going back to school can be difficult for some students and having them on a specific routine will make the transition back to school easier for them and for the parents. Looking ahead, District 2 is hosting a back to school event and resource fair today. It starts this afternoon from 430 through 7 this evening at the Pre-K for SA East Education Center on Eisenhower Road. The second event will be tomorrow at the Museum from 6 to 8.30 p.m. in the evening. Free backpacks, school supplies, and haircuts, and even vaccinations will be provided. There's also several back to school events happening this weekend. Spurs Sports and Entertainment hosting its second annual back to school bash at the AT&T Center on Saturday. This is from 2 to 5 p.m. So parents, students and teachers are invited to this free event to get some school supplies for the new school year. There will also be health checks available and haircuts if you are interested. You must register for the event to attend and you can find that link on our website at kset.com. And City Council District 10 is hosting their annual back to school backpack and supply giveaway. This event is tomorrow from 9 to noon at Blessed Angels Community Center on Nacogdoches Road. There will be free backpacks, school supplies, diapers and food while supplies last. Right now it's 638, 79 degrees. And just ahead, three signs you need to look out for if you think your dog has been bitten by a snake. We'll tell you when we get back. Good morning and welcome back 641 as we head into the weekend San Antonio has plenty of trails for you to take your dogs on a walk. But you should always be mindful of snakes as one expert tells us snake bites can happen fast and depending on the type of snake it can be deadly for your pup. You're going to want to take a look at the snake to see what type of snake did bite your pup. Tell the vet, you know, shape, color, size of the snakes that way they can determine if the snake is venomous or not. 
And some signs to look out for when it comes to those snake bites include swelling in a certain area, excessive licking and behavioral changes. To help make sure your dog stays safe from snakes, it is recommended to always check out an area before taking your dogs there. That way you can see if there are more places for snakes to hide. Check a trans guide right now. Friday morning commute is off and running as we take a peek at 410 and Ingram. Traffic in both directions is moving nicely. So is 410 and Jackson Keller. But on to the bigger project, a billion dollar project designed to improve congestion along Loop 1604. However, the North Expansion Project will lead to more closures this weekend. All right, Stephen Cavazos is live between Blanco Road and Bitters Road. And Stephen, how will this improve the drive time? Good morning, Mark, Stephanie. Well, the goal here is to reduce the drive time by 50%, but if you've driven through Loop 1604 recently, it feels like your drive time may have doubled. But pack your patience this weekend because we have more closures on the way. I've been talking about what's taking place here along Loop 1604 westbound this weekend. Just take a look at the video from when we had crews out there shutting down the main lanes last weekend. Well, we can expect that work to ramp back up again, but although this work may be troublesome, it's temporary, and TxDOT is reminding you the benefits will be long lasting. As we've been telling you all morning long, the goal here is to increase mobilities for driver drivers that is. And currently there are about three segments under construction that starts at Bandera Road all the way to US 281. Now this weekend we can expect to see closures along the westbound main lanes here at Bitters Road and Blanco Road where we're stationed at this morning. But work's going to ramp back up on the far, far northwest side of San Antonio along Loop 1604. Here's what we can expect. A full closure of the westbound main lanes between Kyle Steel Park Parkway and Braun Road. That work starts at 9 in the evening and should wrap at 5 in the morning, but this takes us through Monday morning, so we will see those full closures out there all weekend long. Traffic in the meantime will exit Kyle Shield Parkway and take the westbound frontage road. You can merge back onto the main lanes using the Bandera Road entrance ramp. I know that's a lot of information coming at you this early in the morning, but if you scan this QR code, you can stay in the know before you have to go. That takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We've updated our page with a article that breaks down what's happening here along Loop 1604. It's a pretty big project, and Mark, as you mentioned, it's a billion dollar investment in mobility here. So we have about 150,000 drivers that commute through here each and every day. We're seeing the commute back out here live pick up now that we're in morning rush so you know how busy it's going to get and when you see those closures you may want to avoid it start planning for those alternative routes if not again pack that patience but remember those benefits will be long lasting we will see that improvement here along loop 1604 again the goal is with these three segments that are under construction that it will anticipate to be finished by 2027 still some ways to go guys but remember there's still two more phases that are in the developmental stages so we'll have more updates on our website ksat dot com slash traffic. Just look for the loop 1604 page. And then once they get that completed, they'll start working on 1604 on the south side and the west side. So we'll just be and then It'll always be yeah. so hey, yes, indeed. It's like when they paint the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, they start at one end. By the time they get to the other end, the other end needs painting again. True? I think so. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, great. Look at these two. I wonder if they are sharing the same Little, uh, little tub there, or if that's one's on one side, one's on the other. But I'm sure, Ivana, let us know. Yes, indeed. So great shot, though, and beautiful, beautiful dogs. Thank you very much for that one. Yeah, find a find a pool, something like that, to uh, to stay cool because it's going to be hot and staying very, very hot throughout the foreseeable future. Beautiful sunrise. Sun's actually uh, peeking over the horizon in just about well, 10, 11 minutes and maybe one or two clouds out there. Again, we are at 38 degrees. This is as of yesterday, 38 days, I beg your pardon, of <laughs> wishful thinking in 38 degrees. Uh, we're still well behind last year and this is up to this point in the year. So notice how we just surpassed 2009. However, 2009 was the year with the most 100 degree days at the top of the list. So in other words, at this point going forward, that's when in 2009 we racked up all of the triple digit temperatures throughout most all of the month of August. Same thing with uh, 2011. So hopefully History doesn't repeat itself as far as that is concerned. Of course, last year we had 58 days at uh, triple digit temperatures, but we didn't get that many 
after this point, only a handful, I think four or five more days hit 100 last year at this time. We are going to make it up through the 80s very quickly this morning. Maybe one or two clouds out there, 94 at noon and 104 high temperature today. We are at 102s a couple of days there. Yesterday we stayed just at 101. Seemed like it was a cool snap almost, but then it's back up to 104 and then we're going to get even hotter than that as we go into the uh, latter part of the weekend and going into next week. So we've got the uh, clear skies out there and then you just notice that, yeah, there's some beautiful rain, but it's all staying well up to the north of us because of the high, which is parked just about right on top of things there. All we can hope for is for a trough to develop out here in the Great Lakes by maybe next weekend, and that would hopefully bring about some minor changes for us. But uh, until then, read it and weep, read it and sweat, I guess. 105s all the way through starting Sunday all the way through next week and like I said going in toward next weekend hopefully a subtle change by next weekend two weeks down the road perhaps something but you know a lot changes between now and then <sighs> we were talking about doing the math earlier so add 25 to our current temperature it gets right around Mike's predicted high of 104 subtract 25 it's closer to a delightfully awesome yeah. 54 that would degrees. be nice yeah yeah we can we can imagine Unfortunately, we're going that way and not yeah, that way. I know, right. I know. A matter of time. Thank you, Mike. 648, 79 degrees. Most college dorm rooms come with the basics, a bed, desk, and dresser. And if you have a roommate, well, the space is even more cozy. That presents a challenge, though, finding extra storage space. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, we're going to talk about some solutions to that problem during a live Q&A with the Consumer Reports expert. If you're just now tuning in, let's take a live look outside at your Friday morning sunrise. Traffic is moving very well along Loop 410. Your San Antonio International Airport will be back. Good Friday morning. Coming up here on GMA, Donald Trump pleading not guilty to criminal charges related to trying to overturn the 2020 election. What happens next in the trial and what it means for his 2024 campaign? We're going to cover all those angles. Plus, it's all about the heat again. We've got that dome that hasn't budged much from Texas, but the Gulf Coast has been baking this week. Uh, lots of record highs from Baton Rouge to New Orleans after the hottest July on record for so many people. We'll talk about that and it getting all the way through Southern California to the coast. We'll have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Two Oscar-winning filmmakers are set to be honored at this year's Toronto International Film Festival. Spike Lee will receive the TIFF Ebert Director Award, and Pedro Almodovar will pick up the Jeff Skoll Award in Impact Media. The honors are scheduled to take place at the fifth annual TIFF Tribute Awards on September 10th. Do you want to be present mm -hmm. and, you know, really engaged with... Diane Kruger is getting her own honor, the GoldenEye Lifetime Achievement Award from the Zurich Film Festival. The actress has balanced smaller films with such big budget movies as National Treasure and Inglorious Bastards. She'll accept her award October 2nd and present her latest film, the French drama Visions. I've raced this track a thousand times in the game. Let me drive it my way. That was actually pretty great. Gran Turismo is shifting gears. The racing movie based on a true story is taking the track two weeks later than expected. Instead of August 11th, Gran Turismo will now open in wide release August 25th. Waving the green flag in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's been a busy morning here along Loop 1604. We have been talking about the North Expansion Project. To give you an idea of where I'm at, I'm between Bitters Road and Blanco Road. We are going to see a full westbound main lane closure happening later tonight, starting around 9, and we will see that take us all the way to Monday morning. So we're going to have to prepare ahead of time. Don't forget, there's more work happening over on the far northwest side as well. Traffic's already picking up here along Loop 1604 on this Friday morning as folks are getting ready to drive off for their weekend commute. But here's what you can expect if you have to hit the roads. Let's take that graphic one last time. Current incidents being reported include a disabled vehicle along I-10 at Crossroads. Just watch out in the westbound lanes. We have a shoulder lane blocked as well at I-10 heading eastbound at ProBent. Another shoulder lane blocked there as well. So check those vehicles before you have to hit the roadways. And don't forget to head over to ksat.com slash traffic. We have a full update of all the closures that are happening this weekend. And plan ahead before you head over here to Loop 1604. We will see that closure ramp up around 9 this evening, Mike. 
Okay, before you go this morning, at last check, SAWS crews were working to repair a water main break near University Hospital. It's been going on since last night. In some of this video, you can see water going down medical between Floyd Curl and Wurzbach. We are continuing to follow this developing situation. All right, it's a beautiful start this morning. Temperatures are in the upper 70s throughout much of the area. We do have somewhat of a heat index to deal with and then heat advisories through the rest of today uh, up until 9 o'clock tonight. Again, it stays very hot even into mid evening hours and with the lower humidity in the afternoon. Kind of a good news, bad news situation. Yes, it is comfortable, but that prompts red flag warning, so a much higher fire danger. And we are going to be heating up, heading on into the weekend. 104 today, tomorrow. Both of those will either set or tie their respective records. And then as we go into Sunday, going to be up to uh, 105. And then 105 all the way through the rest of the week. As far as the long range, no relief in sight through at least the next seven days. Perhaps a little subtle change by next weekend. You guys buy your mega tickets? Not yet. No. Okay, don't forget 1.25 million on the line tonight. Drawing during the night. Beat. All right, stay cool. We'll see you at night.